Hey everybody, Alex McGregor here coming to you with a pretty quick video today about how to adjust your adjustable laser that came with the Move Shoot Move Rotator. Let's do it. So if you are new to Move Shoot Move and you want some more basic instruction on how to use and set up the rotator, you can click on this video right here. But if you're already set to go on how the rotator works, now we can talk about how to get the most precision out of your adjustable laser. When I first got my Move Shoot Move rotator, it came with this laser over in my right hand, which works pretty well. It was able to get me lined up to Polaris and I could get a good long exposure with my 50 millimeter lens but it wasn't quite good enough for me to use a longer lens or to get like a two or three minute exposure with that 50 millimeter. So I got the polar scope and that was working really well, but it's not always convenient to align with a polar scope. It can be fairly frustrating sometimes. The laser is really what drew me to move, shoot, move because it is so fast, so convenient and so simple to align to Polaris. And you don't have to like bend down and look through that polar scope. This really is an amazing innovation for star trackers. But unfortunately with this older laser, depending on how they would come out of the factory, they wouldn't be sending a perfectly straight beam out into the night sky. So you might line up the laser with Polaris, but the rotator itself could be a little bit crooked. So you couldn't get the perfectly long exposures by using this older version of the laser. So thankfully, Move Shoot Move came out with this little laser. And if you can see in there, it has these little slots that can be used to adjust the alignment of the laser and make it perfectly straight. And therefore your rotator is also perfectly lined up with Polaris. So I'm gonna show you guys how to adjust this laser and test that it is properly aligned. And that way you can use it with confidence and know you're getting the best possible results out of the investment you made into your Move Shoot Move Rotator. Now looking into the business end of this laser, you can see that little copper part with the black hole in it. That is the lens that the laser beam is coming through and it's not aligned perfectly centered on the laser itself. So this beam is gonna be shooting off in a slightly wrong direction. So with this laser, Move Shoot Move has included an, let's see if it'll focus on this. How do I make it focus on that? an Allen key or a hex key. And this Allen key can be used to adjust an X and a Y axis on the laser to make sure that your laser is centered. So to test how accurately your laser is aligned, you wanna set up your move shoot move with your laser bracket like you normally would to go shoot and slide it in there and make sure that you can still see the Allen key holes so that you can adjust it and then tighten this plastic screw and then you wanna set it on a flat level surface and point it either to a clean blank wall, or in this case, I'm gonna be using a large piece of cardboard. Now, while testing the laser, you wanna loosen the screw just enough so that the laser can spin freely in the bracket in a full 360 degrees. Now I've got my cardboard set up and my laser is mounted in the rotator and pointing at it. As you can see, while I'm rotating it in a circle, it's definitely not straight. See how it's moving like that? So we know that we need to make some adjustments. So to figure out exactly where centered is going to be, I'm going to spin this laser all the way in a circle. I'm gonna mark the top, the bottom, and the left and right. So there it looks like it's at the bottom. It is important to make sure that you don't move the laser or the tracker while you're doing this other than just spinning it in that circle. So now we can see how far off the laser is so we can find the exact center of that circle by using a tape measure, mark it out, and then make our adjustments. So X marks the spot that we wanna get our laser aligned to. 
You can see it's still off on that edge. So I'm gonna use that Allen key and adjust the laser on the X and Y axis until it spins consistently right in the middle of that X. After some trial and error, I'm moving it all around in a circle and you can see it's staying really, really close to that center mark. So I'm going to spend a couple more minutes and really dial this in to get it perfect. So after playing with this a bit more and making some really fine little adjustments, I got to where I can spin it in a circle and it barely moves at all off of that mark. So I would go ahead and trust this that it's going to get me properly aligned to Polaris. So tonight I'm gonna to take out a longer lens and really put this to the test. This is the 40 to 150 Pro from Olympus Cameras. I'm gonna put it on the OMD EM1 Mark III and see if we can get some deep space shots with this little tiny rotator and a laser. It should be fun. The laser works. Before we get into looking at the pictures, I do have to do a little bit of business. Beg you for that thumbs up. Maybe share this video. If this is your first time watching, you could subscribe. I will be coming out with a lot more. And please leave your comments or any questions. And I know this might be annoying to ask of you, but if you are watching this video from Facebook, First of all, thank you, obviously, and thank you for all the awesome feedback you've been giving me on Facebook. But can I ask you a big favor to leave your comments here on YouTube? It helps me out with the algorithm, helps my channel get seen by more people, and puts a big smile on my face. So if you want to put a big smile on my face, please leave your comments here on YouTube. Okay, I'm sorry I had to do that. Let's get into these pictures. So I definitely pushed this little tracker further than it's meant to go last night. It's intended to be used at a hundred millimeter full frame equivalent. And I was using this 40 to 150 2.8 lens from Olympus. So Olympus is a micro four third sensor. So you double the focal length. So it's a 300 millimeter full frame equivalent. I just wanted to really push this thing and see what it could do. So, Let's check out how well it did just aligning with the laser after I made those adjustments. I pointed my camera due south because if you're in the northern hemisphere, that part of the sky is essentially moving the fastest, you could say. It's the hardest to track accurately and I wanted to see what this thing could do. So I found this star, which on my star findering app is, is that one. I, do you know how to pronounce it? I don't know how to pronounce it, but it is due south and I wanted to focus on that. So I took my first image at 300 millimeter equivalent and we can jump in to 100% and see that it's just about perfect. There might be a tiny little bit of trailing, but I would definitely be happy with this as a result. So I decided to push it further. So this is 60 seconds at 100% view here, let's even jump into 200. There is no trailing. There's no trailing and there's really nice diffraction spikes. So it's doing great at just polar aligning with the laser. And of course I got greedy and I pushed it to two minutes. And at this point we can start to see, yeah, there is a little bit of star trailing. I went ahead and took a couple of shots to make sure. And there definitely is some noticeable star trails at two minutes, but again, this tracker is on a lens that's three times longer than what it was designed to handle. And shooting for two minutes like this, I'm very happy with these results. So then I brought it back down to one minute here or 56 seconds and that star trailing is gone for the most part. So I would say it performed acceptably well at 300 millimeters for one minute exposures with using that adjusted laser. Because I did want to get some good deep space shots done last night, I decided to put on my polar scope and align that way. And here is two minutes with my polar scope alignment. Tiny little bit of trailing, but 
again, very good and pushing this tracker way beyond what it was intended to do. So I was able to go drop my exposure time back down to one minute and get some really nice deep space shots. Here we can see the Orion Nebula, Running Man Nebula, Horse Head and Flame. And I also pointed at the Pleiades Star Cluster. So my conclusions are that if you do take the time to properly align this laser, it works super well. If you were shooting at the recommended 100 millimeter maximum, you could track for two minutes, I'd say, pretty safely if you do get this little laser aligned right. And to show you exactly how far off the laser was from the scope, you can look at this picture right here. When I aligned with the laser and then made my adjustments with the scope, that little green dot is pretty close to where the laser ended up aligning. So it was a little bit off, but we're getting pretty finicky here. And if you were just going out with a 24 or a 50 millimeter lens in this properly aligned laser, you should have no problem exposing for a good long time. So this is a wonderful little innovation by Move Shoot Move. I had my doubts about how accurate it would be, but as you can see, I was tracking at 300 millimeters for a solid minute with just a laser. If you do want to get the most accuracy out of your tracker, I recommend picking up the Polar Scope. It does a great job of aligning the move shoot move. As you can see, I was doing two minutes at 300 millimeters pointed directly south. And that is fantastic performance. So, and if you are interested in getting some one-on-one -on -one help, either setting up your tracker or getting the most performance out of your lens and camera, processing your images, organizing them, down below, I do have links to a one-on-one -on -one Zoom class that I'm running right now. And there's also some discount codes. So if you can't afford the full $250 price, please feel free, sign up with whatever discount code you would like to use. And I just love talking about stars, as, as you guys know by this point. So thank you so much for watching. Again, my name's Alex McGregor. When the stars are out, I'll see you there.